November 4th, uh, Mayor Carolyn here with a very important video update. It's actually kind of a public service announcement. I've been doing a few of those lately. And I am here at Big Cedar Lake. And joining me is Brian Stock, who is president, I believe, of the Big Correct. Cedar Lake Stewardship Association. And I also have Diane and Ralph Crosby, members as well. And we're here to talk about a very important issue for all lake communities, not just in North Kawartha, but throughout the Kawartha Lakes invasive aquatic species so i want to thank you guys for coming here today and giving me a bit of a lesson and an education about uh, aquatic invasive species and what we can do um to help uh, slow their spread and hopefully get rid of them so i don't know who wants to start first but maybe brian tell us about how uh, you know how this issue came to be in your lake and and, and what you've been doing we've been dealing with invasive species since uh, about 2005 when uh, zebra mussels first came in right yeah and we sort of sort of live with that but in 2010 11 then we started seeing a real invasion of the eurasian milfoil and that's when we got collectively together as a group and started investigating what could be done with that and that's when we hooked up with uh, trent university right yep and discovered that there was a, a way to manage it and that was with the use of uh, weevils ah okay yeah. so what are weevils Weevils are a natural bug in the water. They're about the size of a piece of rice. And they love Eurasian milfoil. That's all they want to eat. And so we, what we did is, through Trent is they created these labs where they incubated and made more weevils, put them in our lake, and they ate. The, uh, they, they chewed on the uh, Eurasian milfoil. And it helped us control it. You aren't going to eliminate it, but it really helped us control it. And along with that, we introduced a MAT program in high traffic. I know Diane and Ralph, you've been working a lot on this. So that's the starry stonewort. So can you guys sort of share your experience and the kind of things that you guys have been doing to, to help deal with the situation? Yeah. Um, yeah, the starry stonewort was introduced, what, three, three years now? Yeah, it's been about three years. Yeah, fall of 2019. It forms a mat almost that completely coats the, or covers the, the bottom. And it uh, basically, it's so thick that it, it's not a environment for fish, for natural aquatic life. And uh, so uh, we're trying to do as much as we can to mitigate its uh, spread, because right now it's located at our boat launch in the area there. And we're trying to, yeah, which we are at right now. And we're trying to basically just make sure channels clear so that the boats don't cut it up and spread it throughout the lake. Um, so that's mostly what we've been trying to do. And we've been doing that with weeding and mat with mats as well you can use the same those benthic mats that yes. you can same use mats. now we, when, when so you're, we're here at the launch ramp and so we're making the assumption that this came into the lake yep. because of transient boats yep. everything that i've read the largest spreader of starry stonewort is boats moving from lake to lake it's not being spread by birds picking it up and taking it to lakes it's being spread by boats getting it in the lake that is infected and taking it to other lakes, not cleaning off their boat, not cleaning off their trailers, right. uh, their live wells, their, their ballast tanks. It all has to be cleaned out or else you're taking it to another lake and soon the other lakes aren't going to be uh, good for fishing, uh, boating. You're not going to be able to move through the water. Right. So I guess, I mean, and this is one of the things, as I said, why we're doing this video today is, is to bring awareness and to educate people when you're traveling between lakes is to always like to clean, drain and dry your boats, right? That's that's the sort of the, the message that's being put out there. And I know, you know, you guys have done some work looking to get a, a boat wash station near your launch area. It wasn't necessarily successful, but we're going to see a little bit later that you guys have done a, your own little boat wash station and uh, that we can show people. But uh, we're actually, I think, um, we're going to actually get in the water and do some of that manual removal of Starry Stonewort so people can see what it looks like and, uh, and how, how to deal with it. So stay tuned. <laughs> okay, everyone. So Diane and I have been able to... Uh, harvest some of this uh, starry stonewort and like you can see like you said it's just like a thick mat right yeah. and like the what? fish aren't getting through this right yeah right can That's... you even paddle through it like when it's absolutely not i mean the boats Look aren't at... getting through it the, the snail the... caught in there 
even the canoes and whatnot are not going to get through this. And you can see, so I mean, if a boat was going through that with a prop, chew it all up, and isn't and and what is it? So it's what is it that spreads? Where is the actual starry stonework? Didn't we find so? Some? There's some bulbs that you'll see oh. the bulbs. Yep. And the bulbs are what will spread this starry sto stonework uh, to other locations, but even uh, a fragment will will uh, yes. spread. So it's it's not just the bulbs, which are so small you wouldn't even know it's there. Yeah. It's it's any of these fragments are gonna spread it through any little piece, and it's kind of crunchy, like I can feel it, and it's yeah. and it's like clear, like where those what do you call it bulbs are, yeah. and uh, it's almost like fishing line. Yeah. And that's what, how it like hang, and, hangs onto the ground, right? Or anchors itself. Is that what it is? And, and the thing is, it doesn't have to anchor. So it doesn't, it's not like a regular plant that's rooted in the ground. It can actually move and then put its oh. tendrils down and reroot. Okay. So it's, it's a really scary monster. Yeah. Yeah. I see that. And it's yucky. Um, so, okay. So now, so now that we've pulled it out, like what, what is the best way to dispose of it? So way out on the ground. Yep. Get rid of it on the on the land. Don't ever have it in the water. So right. you want to get it on the land, let it dry just out. Just let it break down and yep, compost down. naturally out in the woods somewhere away from the water. That's okay. absolutely true. All right. Okay. Well, here you go, guys. That's exactly what this stuff looks like. So keep your eyes out if you see stuff like this. You know what? Let's be active and aware and let our neighbors know. Say thank you to uh, Diane and, uh, and and Ralph and, and Brian here for giving me a bit of an education when it comes to aquatic invasive species. And I want to do my part, not only in getting the message out to everybody in North Quarth and all of the lake communities that are out there, but I'm going to help by putting up the sign by their fantastic little boat wash station that they've got set up so anybody coming in and out of this lake can wash their boat. So there we go. Help protect our lakes and do our part to stop the spread of invasive species. Thanks everyone, take care, be well. Woo